the baby princess was born with a very rare condition which made half of her skin dark as the rich fertile soil of Akan and the other half as bright as the morning sun. Queen M.M. fearing what the king would do to the princess if he ever found out about her unique skin condition, pleaded with the midwife to keep the birth defect a secret and the midwife promised the queen never to breathe a word of what she had seen to anyone. Once upon a time, in the prosperous kingdom of Akan, lived a very powerful king who ruled the people with iron fists. King Obot was feared around the village and was known to behead anyone who went against his commands. He was known as a king of perfection and his subjects always ensured to present him with the best of everything, his food, his clothes, up to the way his hair was cut, had to be perfect, and King Obot spared no one who jeopardized his perception of perfection. He was once seen to behead his servant, who mistakenly poured a bowl of soup on his robe while serving his dinner one night, and the entire village trembled at the sight of the king. One day, King Obot caught sight of a very beautiful woman in the village. She was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen, and the sight of her screamed perfection. Her name was Emem, and the king, on sighting her, decided to make her his queen. Although Emem was from a very poor family, the king ensured that she was groomed by the best hands in the kingdom on how to live like the perfect queen that he so wanted. Emem, beautiful and graceful, adapted well to her new life in the palace, taking every lesson to heart and exceeding the king's expectations in every regard. However, Emem missed the simplicity and freedom of her former life. She felt caged in the palace and longed for the days when she could roam the village freely, laughing aloud with no care in the world and able to speak her mind without fear or retribution. One day, Queen Emem snuck out of the palace to surprise her old friends in the village. She had not set her eyes on them in months and had to go in search of them. She hoped to return before the king noticed that she was away, but this did not happen. As King Obot strode to her chamber and realized that she was not in her room, he ordered his guards to look for her and after hours of searching, they found Queen Emem. In the company of her male friend Edidion, who had been her friend right from when they were kids. King Obot was so furious to hear that his wife, the queen, was found in the company of another man. A young woman named Idong had approached the king to reveal that she saw Queen Emem and the young man Edidion in a very compromising position. The king, on hearing this, fled up in anger. As he could not believe what he was hearing, he ordered that his wife Emem and the said man be beheaded for tainting the royal bloodline with imperfection. Queen Emem and her friend Edidion pleaded for their lives, revealing to the king that they were innocent, but the king's mind was already made up. The king's guards took the queen and the young man to the execution chamber to carry out the king's orders. When an old wise woman approached the king to reveal that the queen was with child, she warned that Edidion was innocent and that if anything happened to the queen or the child, the whole kingdom would pay dearly for it and the king on hearing this spared their lives. Queen Emem was so devastated as she saw her life flash before her eyes. She could not believe that she was almost killed by her own husband, the king. She lived in the palace, terrified of the king, and as the months went by, her pregnancy progressed smoothly without any complications. One night, Queen Emem went into a painful labor. Her personal midwife, an old kind woman who 
had personally looked after her all through her pregnancy stood by her side as she gave birth to her baby. Her labor lasted for so many hours and Queen M.M. ended up having her child, a very beautiful baby girl with a distinct feature that anyone had ever seen. The baby princess was born with a very rare condition which made half of her skin dark as the rich fertile soil of Akan and the other half as bright as the morning sun. Queen M.M. fearing what the king would do to the princess if he ever found out about her unique skin condition, pleaded with the midwife to keep the birth defect a secret and the midwife promised the queen never to breathe a word of what she had seen to anyone. Queen M.M. then went on to use makeup to conceal a part of her baby's body to hide her birth defect from the world. Once she was done, she carried her beautiful princess and offered to the king, who was so delighted to meet his daughter, a beautiful princess who looked perfect in all ramifications. King Obot, upon seeing the swaddled princess, felt a surge of pride, which softened his heart. His daughter, Princess Itoro, became his weakness as the king loved her with all of his heart. She was so perfect to him and the king called her his perfect princess. As the years passed, Queen M.M. noticed that her daughter's skin defect was becoming more pronounced. She would spend hours every day covering up one half of the princess's body, teaching her daughter the princess that her beauty was a gift from God and a mark of distinction and strength. However, knowing the king's temper, and his obsession with perfection, the queen could not risk putting her beloved daughter in harm's way. She warned the princess never to leave her room without her approval, and for years, Queen M.M. successfully kept her daughter's unique feature a secret until one fateful day. Princess Ituro was asleep when she mistakenly hid down a lamp which fell on her bed, causing a little fire. The heat from the fire woke her from her sleep and Princess Itoro ran out of her room screaming in terror. The palace guards rushed into her chamber to put out the fire which did the whole damage to the princess's bed. The sound of Princess Itoro's loud scream woke her father the king who left his chamber to know what had happened. It was in that moment that the king was confronted with the sight of his daughter in her true colors. Princess Itoro stood before her father bare with no makeup on and the king cringed at the sight of his daughter's two-toned skin. The queen, realizing that her secret had been exposed, pleaded with the king for mercy. Lost for words, the king retired to his chamber, leaving the queen and the princess who now feared for their lives. We need to leave the palace immediately. The queen whispered to her daughter, the princess, as they both snuck out of the palace and found their way out of the village. Queen M.M., knowing how obsessed the king was with perfection, could not stand aside and watch any harm befall her beloved daughter, who had no control over how she was born. They journeyed far away and arrived a very small village. As they walked the streets of the village, a young woman approached them, revealing that the entire village had been waiting for them for a very long time. It happened that a prophecy was given so many years ago, even before the princess was born, of the arrival of a girl born of two worlds who had the power to open up the doors of their palace, which had been shut for years. She revealed to them that their village had been without a king or queen for so many years because of a great tragedy that befell the last royal family who all died mysteriously in the palace. After their burial, another family took over the throne and on their first night in the palace, they also died mysteriously, bringing fear upon the people who later returned and found the palace door mysteriously locked. All efforts to open the palace door proved futile as the villagers received a prophecy of a girl 
born of two worlds, who would break the curse and restore the prosperity of the village. The young woman revealed to Itoro that she was the girl that they had been waiting for all these years, and the villagers, on hearing of her arrival, gathered en masse to welcome her into their village. She approached the doors of their palace as the people gathered around her to see if truly she was the chosen one that they had been waiting for all this while. They all said silent prayers as they eagerly hoped for the best. Itoro, with her dual skin tone that mirrored the duality of the world, placed her hands on the ancient doors and noticed something remarkable happen. The doors, which had resisted all attempts to open them for years, swung open as if welcoming her home. It was as if the palace itself recognized Itoro as its true inheritor and the entire village belated in joy. Inside the palace, Itoro was then shown the reason why the former inhabitants of the palace died mysteriously. The spirits revealed to her that the first royal family that died took the life of an innocent orphan who once served them as a maid. They buried her in her maid's quarters and no one talked about her again. Itoro revealed that the angry spirit of the young maiden was behind all the terrible deaths in the palace as she vowed never to allow anyone without a pure heart to rule the kingdom again. However, the young maiden was pleased with Itoro and allowed her to inhabit the palace for days without any harm befalling her and the people were amazed as they went on to crown Itoro as the queen of their village. Itoro then held a solemn ceremony in honor of the slain maiden whose spirits finally vacated the palace and rested peacefully. The curse was finally lifted and the people rejoiced. Back in Akan, King Obot was now filled with regret as he heard of his daughter's ascension to the throne of another village. Her fame as the queen, who broke the curse, spread far and wide, bringing with it tales of her unique beauty and wisdom. King Obot realized that the imperfection he had feared was actually a gift of inestimable value. He learned his lesson never to judge by appearances again and sought to make amends. He journeyed to the village to see Itoro and begged for her forgiveness. Seeing her father so humbled, Itoro forgave him, and this was the beginning of a new chapter for both of their kingdoms. Queen Itoro became the most talked about monarch in the whole of the land, and her reign was never forgotten, as the people all loved and adored their unique queen. The prophecy had been fulfilled, not by a girl who fit into the world as it was, but by one who transformed the world around her. And in every generation that followed, the story of the princess of two worlds was told, reminding the people that true beauty lies in the coexistence of our contrasts and that unity and peace are found in the celebration of our differences. The lesson to be learned from this story is that we are all unique in our own different ways. Imperfection, as you may know, is actually perfection being creative and beautiful as no one in life is imperfect. Learn to put yourself in the shoes of others and treat them the way you would like to be treated as only then would you understand the true meaning of living. I hope you enjoyed the story. Like, subscribe and leave a comment. It helps us grow our channel. I'll see you in our next story. Bye.